on occasion I get an opportunity to be in the pulpit again, and this is one such time. Uh, I think this uh, particular year, uh, this is my uh, fourth uh, uh, sermon. I was uh, two years over at my uh, the church from which I retired at Savage United Methodist Church up in Howard County, and I uh, also preached at one of the churches I had served down in Upper Marlboro, Bethel United Methodist Church. And this is my home church, and uh, we, we're glad to uh, be a part of this congregation and are glad to, uh, that uh, you all are, are here this morning to participate in this time of worship. Let's bow our heads in a time of prayer. Oh God, may my words be your words. And may my struggling be your struggling. And may we be connected hand in hand because you gave us Jesus, a Savior that we count as ours, but a Savior that belongs to the whole world. Amen. After these events, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, Abraham answered, here I am. God then spoke and said, take your son, your beloved son, Isaac, and go to the land of Moriah. Offer him up as an entirely burnt offering there on one of the mountains that I will show you. This is a difficult story to tell no matter what words you use. It happens to be from the lectionary this Sunday. And as I looked at it, I thought it would be a bit troubling, but I'll go ahead and give it a try not realizing that I would wake up a number of times during the night and think, how is this story supposed to play out? There's so much here. The boy Isaac's life was spared. Abraham's faith was tested. And he did well in the way God looked at it. And then I thought there's so much more to this story. Yes. Why would God ask him to sacrifice his son, his beloved son? In 1843, Danish theologian Soren Kierkegaard published what was his most famous work, fear and trembling. And the book begins with the story of the sacrifice of Isaac from this 22nd chapter of Genesis. And he tells how that he goes through the story and tries to tell it four times in a row. But every time it doesn't make any sense. And he stops after four times. In each one, Abraham is holding the hand of the trusting little boy. And he's guiding Isaac up the mountain, never once discussing what will happen. Until Isaac speaks so clearly, here's the wood, here's the fire, but where's the lamb? Four times Kierkegaard tells this story, trying to make sense of it. He's not satisfied but he puts it in the terms of a title. Isaac, fear and trembling. That's how he must have felt to see the hand of his father over top of him ready to put the knife into his body. But Kierkegaard said there are two questions that I have to ask. What kind of God would command such a thing? And then what kind of father would obey? 
My feeling about Abraham is that he becomes so occupied with the faith journey that he is out of touch with the thought of questioning what God was telling him to do. Notice how the conversations are so straightforward and they were so very proper as though it's best not to show any emotion. Why is it that for the most part Abraham travels in silence for three days and three nights. When they get to the base of the mountain, he tells his servants to remain there. He said, the two of us are going up the mountain there to worship God. Is that what worship is? to take the life of your beloved son. Abraham's conversation with God is so strange to me. For he never asked why or why now. I don't know about your faith journey but mine is dotted along the way with why questions. Why is this happening to me? Why is God not stepping in? Why do we have to suffer? Why do we have to have a child taken away so suddenly as parents? Why do we have to see a child who is suffering? It just shouldn't be that way. Perhaps the story is so awful that part of the faith says it's not the sacrifice of Isaac, of course it didn't happen, but the binding of Isaac. It's just the tying him up. Well, that's a little easier to look at. This morning I want to direct you to the paintings of three artists, and on the wall you'll see these uh, paintings. All of the paintings were completed in the early 1600s. And we would ask, how did they each tell the story about Abraham's sacrifices or the binding of Isaac? First artist is Caravaggio. Okay. We have the first slide. Abraham has laid Isaac bound on a pile of wood a knife is in his hand, and Isaac is being held down as he cries out in great anguish. The concealment of Isaac's hands emphasizes his helplessness. The angel of God appears over Abraham's shoulder, and he is pointing to the lamb directly behind the head of Isaac. And the angel was saying, don't hurt the child. God has provided a lamb. This painting is 1603. The next painting. The artist is Dominique Chanel. That was, the painting was 1627 to 1628. The angel is descending is overhead of Abraham, and the angel takes away the knife. Abraham is standing, and the angel, sent from God, is resting on his shoulder. It appears that there is a struggle going on as the angel reaches out for the knife. On the left side of the painting is the lamb. Isaac appears with his hands tied behind his back, he is staring into space. Abraham, wearing the bright colors of orange and blue, appears in the center of the painting, suggesting that all eyes are upon him. In just an instant, Isaiah's 
Isaac's life could have ended. Painting number three, Rembrandt's painting entitled The Sacrifice of Isaac. It was painted in 1635. Rembrandt painted it when he was 29 years old and it was the same year that his son was born and then died in his infancy, a fact that might be seen in this painting. The painting shows Abraham with his knife stretched out ready to slay his son when God's messenger calls out, Abraham, Abraham. It depicts a moment of interruption. The angel reaches out, the knife appears suspended in the air. It has been dropped by Abraham, whose right arm the angel has seized, thus interrupting the apparent imminent slaughter. Rembrandt frequently depicts dramatic interruptions in his paintings, particularly by the divine. God does interrupt us, and God helps us not to make an error. We may not be at ease with the telling of this story, whether it's the sacrifice of Isaac or whether it's called the binding of Isaac. But we dare ask God, we dare say why all along our life's journey. Amen.